Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today we're taking a look at the new Transformers Masterpiece Prowl MP17 from Takara Tommy. Now starting off we'll take a look at the packaging which is your basic uh, standard Masterpiece packaging that we see with all the Takara Transformers. Um, your basic kind of black and white trim. Um, picture of the actual toy in both robot and vehicle mode on the front um, along with the name um, we also see with this one the Nissan logo since the um, toy is based on in vehicle mode is based on an actual real life Nissan Fair Lady 280Z-T uh, model um, then we'll turn on the back um, on the side here you see another picture of the toy in vehicle mode and on the back we have pictures of uh, showing off some of the features of the toy um, down in the lower corner you can see it's showing demonstrating how the toy will fit in the trailer of the MP10 uh, version of Optimus Prime um, then you see him showing next to Prime in robot mode giving an idea of scale uh, then you show him uh, holding his gun and his shoulder cannons and then there's a bunch of writing in Japanese which I imagine is describing the features but can't really translate so don't know for sure uh, and then on the other side is a close-up picture of the toy in robot mode so as I said basically pretty simple packaging um, with your basic colors and everything that you uh, come to find with all the masterpiece transformers from Dakar so we'll open her up here, uh, pretty simple, you just cut the tape, pull out the, the plastic uh, blister tray, um, just cut the tape on the side, um, and then this just lifts right up, um, and then you pull the toy out with his accessory, it only comes with one accessory which is his gun. Um, and then he's got the instruction manual. Um, his bio card and this little piece of paper which I don't really know is the purpose of and can't really read anything it says because again it's in Japanese writing um, so we'll set that aside uh, the bio card uh, just like with all the other MPs you know it shows you the character some nice character art uh, of Prowl standing in front of the Autobot logo has his name uh, Prowl is the Cybertron military strategist if you didn't know that um, and then on the back uh, shows the toy both vehicle and robot mode again um, bunch of writing in Japanese again probably describing you know probably bio of the character and then some statistic numbers um, which we'll get in a little bit more with the uh, instruction manual here. So instruction manual again very similar to all the other masterpieces that we've seen. Um, it's written in Japanese so can't really read what it says but has good pictures uh, giving you an idea of how to transform it. Uh, sometimes can be difficult to decipher but overall this masterpiece is probably one of the more simpler ones as far as the transformation goes so nothing too complicated. Um, on the back side, um, gives a look at the toy, some of the features, including like the shoulder cannon, um, showing you how the gun will fit in both his hand and then on, on his hood or the roof of the car in car mode. Uh, and then it gives some uh, statistics. Uh, showing his strength, which is a 7, his intelligence, which is a 9, his speed is a 7, his endurance is a 9, rank is a 9, courage is a 9, fire blast is a 4, uh, so I guess he doesn't have a lot of firepower, and his skill is a 9, and then some other uh, dimensions and stuff for the toy are listed. So this masterpiece really doesn't have a lot of extra features. Um, pretty basic. Um, as I said, he only comes with the one accessory, which is his gun. 
Uh, the gun does look pretty similar to his uh, to the G1 counterpart, um, though it's not vac metalized like the original G1 was. Um, and then, as I said, it's got a feature where the the gun handle um, basically will push in, and then this little extra clip comes out. Um, which is made so that you can attach it to the uh, hood of the car um, or the roof of the car in vehicle mode. There's a little hole here, so you just kind of plug it in, and then you can drive around with his gun on his roof. Uh, it's kind of silly looking. Uh, it's not really something I'd recommend displaying it like that, but you know, if you wanted to have give them some extra firepower in vehicle mode that's an option which wasn't something that was included in the original G1 just kind of something they made up for this masterpiece um, the detailing on the car and car mode is pretty nice you can see here um, he's got a gas cap sculpted in the side uh, he's got windshield wipers sculpted on the back um, brake lights, no license plate, uh, it's got uh, sirens that are red, clear plastic, uh, translucent plastic red on the top, um, on the doors, like with the original G1, he's got the highway patrol and the police and his little badge thing, uh, and then on the hood, he's got his Autobot logo, um, along with the little Nissan logo can't really it's a little too small to really make out in the camera here but and he's got some rear view mirrors on the side down on the uh, hood hood of the car which is a little different from the G1 um, this is more in standing with this particular model of Nissan um, but still looks pretty nice uh, wheels are hard plastic um, but they roll pretty well you know, the car rolls in vehicle mode pretty decently. Um, I guess it slides a little bit, but, you know, if you push it. Um, and he's got some windshield wipers sculpted on the front as well. I will say that I think they were a little barren with, like, the decal detailing. I mean, obviously, they're not actual stickers that you stick on like you did with the original G1. They're painted on, but... It's just kind of barren, like on, for instance on his roof here, you know, it's just the Autobot logo. You know, on the original G1 counterpart, he had the, the badge symbol on there, uh, which is missing. Um, and it's just kind of barren, both vehicle and robot mode. Um, they kind of skimped out on the, the decal detailing, uh, which is a little disappointing. Not, not super major, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more detailing in that regard. Um, the headlights are basically a kind of a translucent plastic with with silver painting in the middle. Uh, they look pretty good, especially in the right lighting. And here he is compared to uh, the masterpiece uh, sideswipe. So you get pretty much they're about the same size. Um, both are made pretty much with the same kind of plastic materials and such. Uh, good sturdy, heavy. A little bit of die cast, I think, uh, is used. Um, but it definitely has a good sturdy feel to it, like most of the masterpieces do. Um, here he is next to uh, the Alternator Hound. Um, maybe a little bit smaller. You know, the Alternator is a little bit bigger than the masterpieces, so. Um, but, I don't know, they look pretty good together uh, until they come out with an actual masterpiece hound. This alternator is a good stand-in. Um, here he is with the, next to alternator cliff jumper. Again, doesn't look too bad. Uh, here he is with uh, Ravage. Yeah, Ravage trying to hop a ride. This is the Masterpiece Ravage that comes with Soundwave. 
or no, I'm sorry, it doesn't come with Soundwave, but comes in a... Actually, yeah, it did come with Soundwave, the Masterpiece version. Um, or no, no, I'm getting confused with the Masterpiece Soundwave and the Hasbro Masterpiece Soundwave. He actually, you had to buy Ravage separately with the Takara version. Uh, but nevertheless, here he is with that. Um, so good scale looks pretty good um, so now we'll attempt to transform him as I mentioned before he's you know for a masterpiece he's pretty simple to transform um, I don't know if I call it easy I don't really consider any of the masterpieces necessarily easy I guess it depends on how much of a master transformer you consider yourself um, I don't consider myself a master transformer so and trying to do these on camera can be a little challenging, but basically, you know, I start off um, You can pop open the doors Now one thing I will mention here is the doors do kind of open So if you want to kind of simulate the effect of the doors opening you can but the one thing you want to note is the window is not attached to the door so it looks especially from the side looks kind of funny because the window is still there even though the door is open um, there's no way really around that because the window is attached to the to the hood of the car or the roof of the car kind of deal so you can you know from the front you know it looks like the doors are opening with the windows down and such but that I just wanted to point that out so basically open the doors um, then you can pop down the hands or the arms um, now another thing I want to note here is the arms are basically just attached with simple ball joints so they do have a tendency when you're moving it around and, and stuff in the transformation mode they do have a tendency to sometimes pop off they just easily pop back on but so if they do pop off you know and sometimes it, you might even find it easier just to pop them off while you're transforming it so they're out of the way um, but I just want to point that out that that they do pop off pretty easily. Um, so then, uh, let's see, you pull this piece, like the waist piece, um, comes down. Um, you push the hood down. The head then kind of pushes up through, and then you can turn it so he's facing forward. Uh, the head sculpt is pretty nice, very reminiscent of the G1 counterpart. Um, nice detailing, the red uh, horns and the blue eyes um, look very nice. And again, very reminiscent of the G1 counterpart. Um, this piece here you can pop open and then bend down. And I'll show you that in a minute. And the other thing I want to point out is he's got his shoulder cannons, which are attached you know, in the original G1, you know, they were kind of separate accessories, but in this version, they're actually attached to the toy. So you just kind of pull them out. They have articulation, so you can, like, move them up and down. Um, we'll get into more details about that. So you pull those out. Um, you can push this piece down in so it's not sticking out. Um, and then the arms um, basically will push back up. Um, this is where the arms will tend to have a tendency to pop off when you're trying to kind of move them so that they're fitting up into the wheel well. Uh, the doors, you know, they kind of make the wings in the robot mode, and I'll get a little bit more detail about that in just a minute, but, you know, they essentially move back and forth, and then you can basically move them upward so they're pointed at an upward angle, which is really what you want to do when you're transforming them, because he looks much better with them angled up than just straight back. Uh, push this piece back up. Now the trickiest part of the transformation on, on this one I found is the legs. Um, takes a little maneuvering, especially when you're trying to get them back into car mode from robot mode. Um, basically you want to pull them apart from each other. Um, and then 
He's got these little plastic pieces that slide down. And what basically gets tricky here is that the legs, they kind of bend inward into it, but they have a tendency to not always fit so easily in. Um, so when you're trying to go back in, trying to get that piece to fit in can be sometimes difficult. Um, so then, and then you have to get the feet. Uh, actually, and you want to make sure you turn the waist because he's actually, and actually I should have done that beforehand is you want to turn the waist so he's facing the right way. So then you pull these pieces down on his feet and then you pull it apart on the sides um, so that the feet come down. Again, this can sometimes be a little tricky. Um, he's got the knee joints. Um, and then he's got little flaps on the bottom of his feet which you can pull out which will give him extra uh, balance when he's in when you finish getting him into robot mode um, and then you want to turn these pieces in to basically complete the feet and then you push the the windows down And that's basically uh, it as far as the transformation goes. You know, very similar, I guess, to the original G1. Not not nearly as simple, but but very similar in the actual transformation process uh, to the original G1 counterpart. Um, Okay, so once you have him in robot mode, um, pretty uh, basic, um, you know, not a lot of accessories or features with this one, as I mentioned before. Um, he has his shoulder cannons, which, you know, you can move up and down, um, and then he's got his gun, which you can give him. Um, so, basically, the way the gun works is you want to make sure you push the handle back up. Um, and then he holds it pretty much just like the other MPs do. He's got the little piece of plastic that sticks out. You can hold it in either hand. Um, and then the hands have little slits in them that you put the piece of plastic in. So you kind of wedge the, the handle up in there and get, get it in the groove. And once, he, once he's holding it, he holds it very tightly. Um, you don't have to worry about the gun falling out of his hand once it's in there, uh, which is nice. Um, so let's go over the articulation on this one um, pretty good uh, posability the head moves in a 360 degree uh, turn um, and can look up uh, can't look down even if he could look down it's not like he could see anything with his hood there but he can look up and so you can move his head tilting up and his cannons so he can be like firing um, at seeker jets that are coming in or something which is cool. Um, the cannons can also, you know, you can point them backwards if you want to give him some uh, firepower in the back of them. I will say with the cannons, I'm a little disappointed with them um, in their detailing. They pretty much, they're just basic white, um, not a lot of sculpting detail. They really just kind of look like white pipes on his on his shoulders. Uh, he's, he's got some silver uh, plastic inside him, um, but you can't stick anything in him. Um, no missile inserts or anything like, like you saw with the original. Um, so I would have liked maybe some different coloring. You know, maybe if they had done them gray, they would have looked a little bit more distinctive. Um, or maybe just done some sculpting, you know, additional sculpting details on the cannons. So, I'm a little disappointed with that. I mean, I'm glad he's got this, the shoulder cannons, but I would have liked to see some more detailing there. Um, the arms, uh, you know, as I said, are attached with ball joints. He's got nice 
range of movement um, up, down, uh, swivel all the way around. Uh, elbows are double jointed, which is nice. Um, and he's got the swivel at the bicep. Um, wrist swivel. No kind of wrist joint. Um, but it's got the swivel. And then the fingers, they're all attached to each other, but you can, you know, open the fingers so you can have them in a closed fist or open. Uh, the thumb, however, has no articulation, so the thumb is stuck in that one position. Um, and then he's got swivel at the waist. The legs can move all the way, you know, so you can do split, full splits, which is nice. Um, move pretty much far back, pretty far forward. Uh, knees are double jointed, which is nice. Um, he's got the flap so that you can, like I said, put the legs straight out. Um, and then the feet, you know, they can kind of move up and down. They have a little bit of pivot, uh, not especially the one side, so not really much in the way of ankle pivot, but you, know, you can still overall get some pretty good poses out of this guy. Um, for a transformer, he's, pretty, he's, pretty, he's got pretty good posability. Um, you can even have him kind of hold his gun, awaiting his orders. So, articulation-wise, I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, Detailing-wise, again, kind of like I mentioned in the vehicle mode, I think they were kind of sparse with the decal detailing, uh, especially, most noticeably, in robot mode on the shoulders. Um, an Autobot symbol or his badge symbol, like on the original G1 counterpart, would have been nice. Um, just kind of barren, you know, just the white and the black. Uh, face detailing is nice. Um, I'm kind of zoom in here. Very reminiscent of the G1. He's got the blue kind of reflective eyes with the red horns. And that looks good. Uh, you can see the Autobot symbol on his hood from up top. And the doors um, have the police. You, know, you can see the police highway patrol symbol on his wings. Like like with the G1, and that's nice. And and uh, as I mentioned, you can angle the door. If you want to just have the doors straight back, um, you can do that. I think it looks better when you angle the doors up. Um, he's got some detailing on the waist, uh, the red symbol with the w some white paint there, um, kind of like the original uh, G1. Um, and then on his legs. Now again, here's another area where it's kind of missing some decaling. You know, in the original G1 toy, they had some stickers that kind of gave him robotic look, um, like internal robotic parts there. Um, here you just have basic black plastic. You know, some sculpting detail in the black plastic, but you can't really make it out very well because it's just, you know, again, black plastic. Um, so just kind of barren um, in that regard. Um, another thing I point out here, it's not really listed as a feature, but if say you wanted him not to have his gun in his hand, you can uh, basically, just like in the vehicle mode, you can kind of pop it on the back here. So he's basically has it on his back. Now you can only have the gun barrel pointing upwards like that. Um, so you, know, you do see the gun barrel sticking up when you do that. But, you know, like I said, if you don't want him to hold his gun, but you don't want to, you want the gun to be, you know, him carrying it, you know, it's kind of like a feature. Um, and then the other thing I'll point out, if you don't, if you don't want the shoulder cannons uh, displayed in the robot mode, you know, again, they're not detachable like on the original G1, but you can basically put them, you know, fold them back. And then close this so that they're basically not there. So he does have the option of basically not having the cannons if you if you don't want them displayed with the cannons. 
I'll put these back out. I, even though I think the detailing on the cannons could have been much nicer, I still think it looks better with the cannons than without. So here he is. Uh, next to his alternator counterpart. Um, you know, again, you can see that the masterpieces tend to be a little bit smaller than the than the alternators. Uh, and you know, you can see on the alternator that you know they had the decaling, you know, the badge on his shoulders and stuff. So I just kind of wish they had done that with the masterpiece version. But there he is with with masterpiece or with the alternator. Um, here he is with uh, the Masterpiece Red Alert. So you can see they're about basically the same size. Uh, nice scale. Here he is with Masterpiece Grimlock. Uh, bit shorter, but again, looks about right scale wise. Here he is with Masterpiece Soundwave. So overall, you know, I really like this masterpiece. I'm glad we've we're getting Prowl, um, and then we're going to see this mold again with both Blue Streak and Smoke Screen, which will be coming out shortly. You know, basically just like they did with the. With the G1 counterparts, they're using the same body for, for those two. Um, and, you know, definitely I think, you know, if you're a G1 fan and you've been collecting the masterpieces, I think this is definitely one to pick up. Um, you can get them now at Big Bad Toy Store. Um, and definitely I think it'll make a nice addition to your collection. Um, again, my only real fault with it is just a little bit skimpy on the decal detailing and a little bit, you know, and I'm not terribly impressed with the shoulder cannons on this one. Um, but otherwise, I think this is a great toy, a lot of good posability, and looks very reminiscent of the G1. So that's my review. Um, you can go to TNI. There's a link below. We have a whole gallery of images for for this guy if you're not watching this review on the website um, be sure to go check out all the images and I will check you later till next time